It is time for the most hyper fine batch of the year. That's right, it's time for Choose Your Legend 6 Refines. And not only that, we're also going to have Legendary Female Byleth, Atri, and Keaton as well. And let's just get right into it because this is a big batch. Let's start off with Brave Female Byleth. We have Order Sentence. This has Slaying still. It still gives the no follow up effect at start of turn as long as she's an ally within two spaces. She's going to get that cool times plus effect. If she initiates combat or if there's an ally within two spaces, she'll get all stats plus five during combat. She gets a new effect where she gets to reduce damage from the foe's first attack by 20% of her speed. So that's 20% flat damage reduction, which is really nice. And then also she has that effect where if her special is triggered before or during combat, she'll get special cooldown count minus one after combat. So very nice little effect there. They just added in there to make her a little bit better. We then have her actual refine, which is Kanto one. And then also she'll get all stats plus five plus 10% of her speed at start of combat. She gets seven true damage per attack. And she neutralizes effects that inflict guards, the anti-guard effect, and she gets full damage reduction piercing whenever her special triggers. Okay, so overall, how well did female Byleth really do? I'm going to be honest, I don't think this is all that great of a refine. I think she's kind of in an awkward place where they're trying to make her still like a mixed phased uh, mage where she's still kind of good at the like the vantage playstyle she originally introduced. But at the same time, they didn't really make her like strong enough in either category. Uh, the nice flat damage reduction is great and it works really well with her special as her special does give non-pierceable DR. But if her special doesn't trigger, then all of a sudden she becomes very, very frail. And that's like the big problem with her. And that's kind of the problem that she's had since she's released and it's only gotten worse with time. She's really, really reliant on her special to proc. And so when you run into things like Scowl, like Hush Spectrum, if you cannot get that special off, she's just in so much trouble. And that's like the really biggest problem. And so the effect she really needed more than anything else in her kit was a special jump effect. She needed a special jump before her first attack. That way she could get around Scowl and some other stuff, right? Not have to worry about guard either too. So she wouldn't even have to be need really the anti-guard as much because she could have that special jump. Uh, and because of that, like it really gives her a glaring weakness and you really need to fill that weakness with a support like, you know, um, Nephany or like somebody else who can give special jump like the Robins, right? So that way she doesn't have that weakness because if she doesn't get her special off, she's just kind of dead. And so you really need that to proc. And the other biggest problem is that her damage isn't really all that insane. Um, I don't know what they were thinking with this one. We're going back to like um, <laughs> flying Nino in year two of Fey with the seven true damage on the weapon. It's just absolutely insane. We haven't seen anything like this in a minute. I think the last time we actually saw this was like with Altina, uh, with her refine. Uh, so we don't have like scaling true damage here. We don't have like 10% of her speed, 20% of her speed, anything. And because of that, that's like, going to be a big thing that will hold her back. Uh, I think they partially did this due to her PR of special having some true damage uh, based off her sp speed in it. But they should just double down because like that would have at least made her like a pretty solid flying nuke. You kind of just like completely throw speed preempt out the window. You go for resonance and then she can actually do some like really serious damage as she would have damage reduction piercing on her special and then also have some for what her other attacks as well. Uh, but they didn't go that route. So she's kind of like just all over the place. She has some good effects. She's definitely not a bad unit by any means, but I don't think she's going to be strong enough as a nuke to where you really want to run her in like any like hardcore meta competitive game modes. She's still definitely usable and can be quite powerful, but like she's definitely not going to be a meta unit, especially with that new Fjorm coming out. I think she's really going to struggle. Now let's move on to Brave Seleth, the most powerful unit on release for the CYL. So he has Kanto 2, he gets Slaying, and then if, and then if unit or foe initiates combat after moving to a different space, you're gonna get plus five to all stats during combat. You'll still get that true damage that scales based off how many spaces are moved by either self or the foe. And then you'll also still have that miracle effect where if your HP is gonna equal 25% at start of combat and either self or the unit or the foe has moved, then you'll get that miracle effect and that can happen once per combat. Uh, so nothing really different here from the base of weapon so let's move on to the actual refine itself and this is at start of combat once again if you have the hp condition you meet you get a bonus to all stats equal to five plus the number of foes within three rows or three columns centered on self times two max of 11. so in total you're getting plus 16 to all stats which is pretty solid uh, you also get to have damage reduction having which is really really good this is one of the key effects he absolutely needed and then next you get a clash effect. Now this is a little bit different than the normal clash um, as it does activate both on enemy and player phase, not just the special part, but also like both effects, which is good. Uh, what this essentially is gonna give self is 12 flat damage reduction against the foe if you have moved the max amount of spaces, and then also 12 additional flat damage reduction if this foe special triggers. 
Uh, so this is a pretty cool effect. Glad to see this in here as well. Uh, just like kind of you could just double down right on that uh, Excel and get some really nice damage reduction. And then lastly, he gets some healing after combat. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Um, it's good for like a majority of game modes like SD, a little bit of healing will be nice. It's not enough healing to keep you in that miracle range of 25%. So it kind of that kind of sucks. Um, you would need something else like I don't know, like Mystic Boost Seal or like a healing support or something like that. But it also makes it so that like you're a worse Gale Force initiator because you can't like hit that one HP with the Miracle and then just be in Wings of Mercy range for your entire team. Uh, so that's something you have to consider as well. So I, I don't think this is like the best effect, but it's not the worst effect either. So it's okay. Now overall, how well did Seliph really do? I think this is a good refine. It definitely makes Seliph better than he was. It addresses one of his big problems, which was like damage reduction. Uh, obviously you can run no quarter, but the problem was that Seliph didn't really have a way to like reliably proc no quarter, right? He doesn't have like anti-guard or special acceleration, so he could get really in there, right? Um, so the way it kind of was working now is like he just kind of had to just hope he can get no quarter off or like m run the Marth ring. Uh, now having damage reduction having on every hit will be much nicer. The one big problem is that it does not include AoEs and AoE Brave Self is like pretty much his best build in SD right now. So I really wish it did include that because that would have been really powerful and it would have like really just upped his power for this refine. So it's kind of a downside there. The other thing that kind of holds self back in my opinion is that his whole kit really is based around movement still. Uh, this kind, I mean, this works, but it definitely is a weakness you can exploit with Seliph, where if he does not move or the foe does not move, you don't get that miracle effect, right? But now you also don't get any of your flat damage reduction either, because the way it works is that it's based off the spaces moved, and it's times three. So if X equals zero, zero times three is still zero. So you're getting no damage reduction at all, which is a big downside. Now, typically, you'll probably get around, you know, three to six, I'd say. You most time it won't get like that massive 12 per one effect or even like 24 from both effects just because typically units aren't moving that many spaces to engage in combat. Usually that you're only going to get that on player phase when self himself is engaging, which is still really good. Don't get me wrong, especially when you combine it with Excel, like doubling down is really nice and it will make self a lot more tanky. I'm just afraid of like his enemy phase, like when after he does that big hit and kill something, tries to get out, it might not help him as much as you think it would. Overall, I do think this makes Self a lot better. It's going to make him a competitive unit again. I don't think this is going to make him like a meta top tier unit like he once was. Like he's not going to be dominating the meta. But he's definitely going to be usable in things like SDS on like those big Pathfinder teams. And him and Brave Crom will definitely be working well together again. So glad to see him get his nice upgrade and definitely excited to do some testing with him as well. Okay, let's move on to the winner of the female side. Adult Tiki, or should I say the loser? Oh my gosh. So when Brave Tiki came out, it's not really much of a secret. She was not the best unit. She was kind of dead on arrival. I know a lot of people will argue about that because they're very defensive, but she was. That's just the truth of it. And so we have Remote Breath. This has slaying. It has effective versus dragons. And then if she's within three spaces of an ally, she'll get all stats plus five. She gets a guaranteed follow-up attack. She also gets her special jump one effect before her first attack. And if the foe's attack can trigger their special, so they have an offensive special, you're going to get that scowl effect if you can meet the resistance check. And then, of course, you get the dragon adaptive damage. So not really anything new here as well. Let's move on to the actual refine. So first of all, unit can counterattack regardless of foe's range. So very nice. We're getting some distant counter up in here. Uh, and then at start of combat, if she meets the HP condition of 25%, she's going to get a bonus to all of her stats equal to 5 plus 10% of her visible res at start of combat. She'll get flat damage reduction based off 20% of her resistance, but does not work with AoEs. And she gets damage reduction at halving. Okay, so how well did Tiki do with her refine? I think me and everyone else was expecting Adult Tiki to come out here and just get the best refine of all time. Uh, like, you know, get that brave Dimitri, brave Hector level of refine. But I hate to break it to you, this is absolutely not it. Unfortunately, this refine just doesn't have a lot of the key effects Tiki really needs. And it also doesn't really synergize with her current best build either, which is the Ligu's Friend 4 build. Um, the thing is, is like this refine's almost the same as Brave Dimitri's was like two years ago, which is kind of crazy. Now the big difference obviously is that she gets this encounter, which is a big powerful effect, but I think it took up too much of the refined budget overall and it didn't give her the key effects she really wanted to succeed. Um, the thing is, is with like Lagoo's Friend 4, you're already getting damage reduction piercing when there's special procs and then the attacks afterwards. So it makes it so that this damage reduction having really isn't all that great. Now stacking more flat damage reduction is really nice. Uh, the extra 20% is great. It really does help like Lagoo's Friend 4 just like really go into full power. 
The problem is that she doesn't really have percentage damage reduction if she does go without Lugus Friend 4 build. And also she can't really use Dragon's Roar with the Lugus Friend 4 build either. So you're kind of like being pushed more towards like the high Dragon Wall build, which is still good. It gives you that anti-teleportation, but all the damage reduction is pierceable, which is pretty rough. And so we're kind of in an awkward situation where Tiki doesn't really have an ideal build at the moment. Maybe they'll release more Dragon skills and kind of fix this. But I'm not, like, I don't have a lot of confidence in that, to be honest. Uh, the problem is, like, her kit just doesn't synergize well with anything. And her preference B skill is not very good at all. Like, I would definitely not run that uh, unless you have no other option. Uh, you, high Dragon Wall is, like, way better, in my opinion. Uh, the other thing is, like, her special jump in her weapon doesn't synergize with Lugu's friend also. Uh, you really want defensive special jump before, like, your, before uh, the foe's first attack instead of before her attack. Because that would let her run something like Glacies, right? And then she could instantly charge Glacies. She would get the damage reduction from the Ike Ring. And then she could also retaliate and do massive damage and just take out the foe. Because she would have damage reduction piercing from Lugu's friend for also. But because it's before her first attack, what will happen is she'll get hit first, not have the damage reduction piercing from the Ike Ring. Then she will have her Glacies charge and she'll attack back if she's alive, right? So I think that's like one of the big uh, downsides for her. The cool thing she can do is she can run just a ton of Scowl if you want, right? You can run Scowl in the A slot. You can run like uh, even Res Wave, I think it is, in the C slot and just have a ton of Scowl. The thing is though, is that not many people use like really high special cooldowns like they used to, like Lethality and stuff. So it's not as effective. Uh, really, you don't need more than like Scowl 2 typically. That's like more than enough. And so I just kind of find Tiki in an awkward situation where she's definitely not a bad unit by any means. Like she's definitely a solid Omni tank if you give her like a full kit of like all the premium skills she wants. And having Distant Counter in her Refine is nice because it opens up her Seal slot, which is a, a big boon. Like that's great. But I just really don't think that anything synergizes really well. And it doesn't really put her up to the same level as our current Omni tanks. She's like a really far cry from something like Emblem Ike or like Legendary Male Alir. But I do think she's absolutely usable. And the cool thing is because you're not going to be using a Preference B skill, she can run like any of those Echo skills. It's like NCD Echo or even like Guard Echo. And then you could even bring in the new Felicia and give her NCD and take away her Dragon Weakness as well if you want to go that route. So I definitely think Tiki is usable. I don't think she's terrible by any means. That's not what I'm trying to say. I just don't think this is like the crazy refine we were all really hoping for. Uh, this is not the Brave Dimitri level refine. This is not the refine of the year, right? It's really unfortunate. I'm not sure why IS just seems to hate adult Tiki, but that seems to be the case. So let's move on to our Chucha Legends big winner, Brave Krom. Okay, so we have Brave Krom, and Brave Krom has been by far the best aging Chucha Legends unit out of this batch. He is just insanely good now before his refine, and with his refine, he's going to get a lot better. Um, so let's start off with the weapon itself. We have Slaying, we have Effective Against Armors, and then if he initiates combat or if he's within two spaces of an ally, he's going to get all stats plus X with no cap on it, which is the crazy part, and that's going to be equal to two times the amount of bonuses and penalties active on Krom. He's going to get 40% damage reduction against the foe's first attack. It is now Brave damage reduction, which is nice. A little upgrade there. And then also, if a bonus is active on Krom, he'll get special cooldown plus one per attack to so get that special acceleration. So overall, this is the same weapon he had before. Big difference is he's just getting that brave damage reduction now, which is nice. Makes him a little bit sturdier. But then we have the actual refine. If a movement assist skill is used by unit or target's unit, he's going to get damage reduction having as a visible bonus. He's going to get the dull all effect. So like the neutralize the foe's bonuses during combat as a visible bonus. That's two more visible bonuses. And then also at start of combat, if his HP is greater than equal to 25%, he'll get an additional plus five to all stats during combat. He'll get true damage equal to the number of bonus effects active on himself times four, max of 16. And then lastly, he'll restore seven HP after combat. <laughs> so um, this is kind of like a Brave Edelgard situation, in my opinion, where Brave Edelgard was already a really powerful unit going into the refine. And even though her refine wasn't insane, because it was just good, like a good refine overall, it made her just ridiculous, right? I think this is the same thing with Krom. We have a really powerful cab unit going into the refine, and now he just got way better in my opinion. The big thing is, is that they gave him some really key effects that he really wanted. And so even though there's not like a ton of effects here, all of them are very valuable, uh, except for maybe the healing. The healing's kind of like, okay. Uh, so let's start off at the top, the damage reduction having. So one of the big things Krom kind of could struggle with is that he doesn't have like anti-guard or anything like that. And so he could kind of run to a situation where he can't proc no quarter reliably, and that can kind of be a big problem for him. 
Now having damage reduction having means that you can still run no quarter, but now you always have some kind of damage reduction having, even on those hits where no quarter isn't proccing, which is really strong. You also get neutralized foes bonuses. Now one of the big things of course about Krom is that all these visible bonuses are stacking up stats for him, and he becomes a massive stat monster. And so the way you kind of counter that is by stacking your own stats. And by having this dull all effect now, he completely neuters anyone who wants to stack stats via visible bonuses, such as like bonus doubler or anything like that. And so it's extremely strong. It's a very, very powerful effect. And the fact that he's having to run like a low speed defense or something like that in his B slot is big. It's really, really strong. It really opens up his builds. And this is just a really strong effect as well. But then on top of that, you get true damage. That's right. And because of the way his kit already works, he easily is going to be able to hit that 16 true damage pretty much all the time. He'll essentially like have no problem with this at all. And so that means he's getting 16 true damage on all of his hits. And then the healing's nice too. So when you compare this to even with like someone we just looked at, like Brave, Brave Female Boss, who's only getting 7 true damage per hit um, capped, right? This is more than double that on the best Seawild unit like currently out of this batch. That is nuts, right? So overall, this isn't like the most crazy refine ever. I don't want to like try to like overplay it, but it's a very solid refine that gives very key effects that Krom wants, and it gives him a lot more power. And so like overall, Krom is just a really strong unit now. I think the only thing I really wanted on this refine that didn't show up was like anti-guard. I think that would have been really nice. You can still get it from other ways technically, uh, but like having that in the weapon would have been really nice. But overall, very, very solid refine. Krom once again gets even better, and I don't think he's going to be falling off anytime soon. Okay, with the Choose Your Legends Refines done, let's move on to our free-to-play unit, Keaton. So we resolve Fang, this grants defense plus 3, and then if the foe initiates combat, or if their HP is greater equal 75%, you're going to get speed, defense, and resistance plus 5, and you'll also inflict defense minus 5 on the foe. You'll get 20% true damage based off your defense, including AoEs, which is really interesting. You also get a guaranteed fob attack, and you get to neutralize your own penalties to attack and defense. And then, of course, you get the Infantry Beast Transformation, which offers that extra true damage and full tempo and attack plus two. So very nice effect right there. Nice upgrade to his base weapon, which was pretty underwhelming when it came out. Uh, we then have his Astral Refine, where if he's within three spaces of an ally, he's going to get another round of speed and defense of res plus five, and inflicts another defense minus five on the foe. So overall, you're typically getting plus 10 to all stats. Now, obviously, it's a little bit different, so the defense checks are better, but it's overall plus, five to all, plus 10 to all stats. You're also going to reduce damage from the foe's attacks by 15% of your defense. That's right, you're getting 15% flat damage reduction, which is really good as well. You're going to reduce the effects of deep wounds by 50%, so any of those anti-healing effects will get halved. And then lastly, if you're within three spaces of an ally, you're going to get Breath of Life 4. Now the thing is, this is a selfish Breath of Life 4. It's not like a supportive effect like normal Breath of Life 4. It's only for him. But even so, it's really, really strong. Like obviously, this is like one of the best skills in the entire game right now. And so being able to have that built into your weapon means that you have a lot more flexibility in that C slot. And so overall, I think Keaton got a really good refine, especially for a free to play unit. Like this is actually kind of insane. Um, now the thing is too, he can run the Goose Friend 4. Like we were talking about earlier with Brave Tiki, that's going to be his best B slot. It lets him just stack up that flat damage reduction, which is really nice. It's going to give him damage reduction piercing, which is something he also wants. He can easily run something like Bonfire, which is the three cooldown special. And because he doesn't have slang, you can run something like Times Pulse in his C slot. And what will happen is you run the Ike Ring, they come to attack you, you get the Ike Ring non-pierceable DR, which is percentage based. And then right afterwards, you're going to just hit them back with a really big Bonfire fire and do a ton of damage like not only does the bonfire do damage you get true damage and you're piercing dr um it's just a really nice combination of effects here it's really really good and if he's transformed as well he's getting tempo so it's really difficult to stop any kind of special uh spamming and especially when you combine tempo with special jump uh it just works really really well like he's just be a special spamming machine who's gonna hit absolutely really hard now, I want to be clear, I don't think Keenan is like the best, at, like, you know, Omni tank in the game or anything like that. I don't think he's at that level of like play, but he's way better. He's absolutely useful now, and he can definitely like put in some work uh, with the right build. You're definitely gonna have to invest like a pretty big amount into him to make him work at that top tier level, but even if you do, he'll definitely work out for you. Overall, I'm very happy with this refine. Let's move on to our two remixes, and let's start off with Legendary Female Bio. Okay, we have Professorial Guy, this has Slang, and then she initiates combat, or if there's an ally within 3 rows or 3 columns, so extend the range on that. You're going to plus 5 at all stats, you're going to reduce damage from the foe's first attack 
by 30% and this is brave damage reduction you're going to get the full tempo effect on yourself and then any allies within three rows of three columns centered on Byleth will also get plus four to all stats and full tempo. So overall, we do have some nice little upgrades here with a nice little damage reduction built into there. And then also increasing the range, making it much more effective and usable. Uh, and also making the support a lot better in my opinion too. Though it is very similar to like male Byleth, just with tempo this time instead of NFU. We then have the refine itself, which at start of combat, if you have the HP condition of 25%, you're going to get a bonus to all stats equal to the number of allies within three rows or three columns centered on unit times two plus five max of 11 plus to all stats you'll get 20 percent true damage based off your speed but not with aoe's and then also when your special does trigger you'll neutralize all non-special damage reduction okay before we talk about how good this is let's move over to our actual remix as well Okay, so we have Goddess Bearer 2. At start of turn, if there's an ally within three rows or three columns, so the same condition of her weapon, she's going to give herself a visible attack and speed plus 7, NFU, and then she'll also get the Oath Warping effect where she can teleport to a space adjacent to any ally within two spaces. And then once again, if there's an ally within the three rows or three columns centered on herself, she'll get an additional plus 4 to all stats during combat, she'll get special jump of 1 before her first attack, and then also if the foe is using an offensive special, she'll also inflict a scowl effect. So really nice effect on this i really like this prf uh, upgrade i think it's like where a lot of her power is coming from one big thing she really wanted was special jump and scowling scowling is really good currently because we have not only emblem ike but a lot of other units who are reliant on that special proccing to do most of their damage and to actually secure kills like brave alphonse too right so being able to get those effects i think is a big upgrade here and is really going to help her out overall but now let's go back to the refine and talk about her overall package now, I think this refine is good, but not really amazing. The support is nice. Having that um, tempo support is something we've been looking for for a very long time. And before, Female Violet was the only one that gave it, but it was very limited and difficult to use. It is now much easier to use with the conditions. She still is a legendary unit, though, which means that her ability to be used in Aetherade's offense is still not the best, which is kind of unfortunate. But at least you can use this really well in Arena and in SD as well. Now, when it comes to her actual refine, uh, it helps her out for sure. Like getting more stats is always welcome. And the 20% true damage is a really big deal. That's something she really desperately needed. And then obviously damage reduction piercing was the big thing that male Byleth had over female Byleth. So having that now is also really, really nice as well, as it just allows her to open up her B slot for a lot of different options, like a cultist strike, or even like if you want to do resonance to get true damage and more DR having when you're not proccing specials. That's also an option. Um, I think a cultist strike will probably be the better option overall, but it does give her a lot of build flexibility. I just don't I just don't think that overall Legendary Female Bioth got a refined remix that like puts her at the top of the meta by any means. I don't think she's like a top tier nuke. Uh, nukes right now are not in the best place and I don't think this even puts her at the same tier as like the best nukes that are currently out, right? Um, so I think that's like one of her big problems. I think the other big thing is that she just doesn't have a special that really helps her out. It's kind of ironic, but I feel like if they would have combined uh, Brave Bioth's Refine and Legendary Female Bioth's Refine together, like as one unit, which obviously they won't do. But if they did that, I think we'd actually have a really powerful unit on our hand because uh, Brave Ballast special is really, really good. Um, it's a really powerful special. It was really powerful when it came out and it scales off speed. And that's the big thing. We don't have a speed scaling special for mages yet. And so if they do release something like, let's say a Gust-esque special for mages, I think Legendary Ballast stonks will go up quite a bit because that's like the one thing she really needs because she's a very consistent special spammer, uh, much better than her brave counterpart in my opinion because she's not weak to scowl because she has that special jump effect built into her kit. Um, so I think having that, she just needs the special. So I think if they release a good special for mages, her, she'll just become way more powerful or if somehow we can just steal Brave Battle special and give it to her, like that would be insanely good. So obviously that won't happen though. Don't get your hopes up. Um, but I'm just saying like, you know, in a, a possible situation, that could have been amazing. So overall, I think Rest of Refine is good. Definitely makes Battle better. Definitely makes her usable in uh, game modes, but I just don't think it puts her up to that meta competitive level, especially considering how much crazy power creep we have right now. Like you really need to be powerful as a nuke to fit into those high tier uh, SD matches or like even those top tiers of nuking. Okay, with that said, let's move on to our final refine and remix. It's Atri. When Atri released, she was actually a really powerful unit thanks to like her high mobility and like pretty solid damage dealing. But over time, she fell off really hard, like Hardy Fighter killed her. 
So we have our refined remix, and I'm gonna be honest, they cooked. It's gonna give you attack plus three, you're gonna get Kanto two, turns one through four, and then she initiates combat, or if the number of allies adjacent to her are less than or equal to one, she'll inflict attack and res minus six and speed minus five on the foe. She gets a guaranteed fall attack, she gets 15% true damage based off her attack during combat, and she heals seven HP after combat. Okay, overall, this is a nice little upgrade to her base weapon. It makes it so that her conditions are a little bit easier. It gives her some extra speed, extra true damage, and even a little bit of healing, so not bad. But then we get to the actual refine, and this is where things get really good in my opinion. At Star of Combat, if you meet the HP condition of 25%, you're going to inflict attack and res minus 7 on the foe, sabotage, and schism on the closest foes, and any foes within two spaces of those foes through their next actions. So this is a global range debuff of three different debuffs, which is really nice. If you don't know what Schism does, Schism is the effect that came off Ruse 4. It disables Triangle Attack, Dual Strike, but most notably now, Pathfinder. That's right, Pathfinder. Now this won't turn off Innate Pathfinder, like on Dagger's weapon, but it will turn off Pathfinder that the da Dagger gives out, or if like Brave Chrom copies it, or like Duo Dagger props it, or something like that, right? It will disable that effect, and so that's really, really good in the current SDS meta. I love that. And then also, if you meet the HP condition again, you'll inflict a penalty on the foe's attack speed and resistance to combat equal to 5, plus the number of foes within 3 spaces of the target, including the target. So this is actually a really nice little debuff here. Typically, you'll probably get like 5 to 8, but if you get in there like on a full team, that's minus 10 to all stats. So that's like overall a nice big debuff, giving her just a lot more stats. Uh, she'll also reduce the damage from the foe's attack by X during combat. And then also when the foe triggers their special, she'll get another round of X. And X is equal to 3 times the total number of bonuses on a tree and penalties on the foe, a max of 12. So that's be 12 flat damage reduction at max. And then if the special triggers, it's 24 flat damage reduction. So this is very similar to like, you know, Brave Self we just saw a second ago. The big difference is that it doesn't require movement. It requires penalties and bonuses. And that's really a lot easier to get in my opinion. Um, she herself is going to inflict two penalties by herself and she can easily get some bonuses on herself. That's not that big of a deal. That They get thrown around all the time. So I think this is really, really nice. But let's move on to her actual remix. So we have Divine Recreation 2. If you should initiate combat or the foe's HP is greater than 50% at start of combat, you're going to inflict minus 4 to all stats on the foe. You can reduce damage reduction on the foe by 50%, but not with AoEs. And you'll reduce damage from the foe's first attack by 50%. Brave damage reduction. And then lastly, your next attack will deal damage equal to the total damage reduced from that attack. So damage reflection. So this is a nice upgrade over her base PRF skill. Um, giving damage reduction having is really big on flyers, especially because it takes up her B slot, so she can't run something like Ren Resonance, right? So this is really, really nice. But the big thing is that damage reflection has actually gone up in value like immensely. Uh, if you've seen Infantry Pulse's defense team where he had the level one Shinon with Brash Assault and like the damage reflection, it was crazy because like you just take so much damage and if you can survive, you're just throwing back like 100 damage in the foe's face. And so having that is really, really nice because she has not only that 50% that is pierceable, but she also has the 24 flat damage reduction at the foe procs that are special. And so being able to throw that back into the foe's face just makes her hit way harder than you're like imagining. She's gonna hit really, really hard. And when you combine that with the support effects she offers, she's just really strong in my opinion. Like this is a really, really nice effect. You combine that with 15% true damage um, and the guaranteed fall attack is also pretty solid as well. Uh, it wouldn't have been good like years ago, but now guaranteed fall attacks are actually pretty good because like not many people have defensive no follow up. Even the new hardy fighter, like uh, shield fighter, whatever it's called on Fjorm, doesn't have defensive no follow up. And so having a guaranteed fall attack is really good. And like I think overall, I think Atrium just kind of like stole the show a little bit. Like this is like actually an insane refine, especially for something like SDS. I think if the meta does shift like pretty hard because of Fjorm coming out and her ability to stall, a lot more people will be switching back to like triangle attack or stuff like that. Just like playing that slower meta, right? So having uh, a tree out there to be able to turn off triangle attack, to turn off dual strike and pathfinder just disables so much of that slow meta. And even when people are trying to play the fast meta with pathfinder, she'll turn that off as well. So I think this is a great refine. I'm, I'm really hyped about this. Uh, I really am excited to see where she goes from here. I don't think she's like a top tier unit. I don't want to say that, but I do think she got a really powerful niche and some really great support. Okay, with that said, let's move on to the final part of the video. Who won the Refine War of September? Now, before I start, I want to make this very clear because I know people are going to skip to this part of the video. This is not a tier list of how good the heroes are themselves. This is a tier list of how good the refines are, as always. 
So I'm going to have Atri up in S tier by herself. I think she got the best refine of the batch. The refine is just gives her everything she wants and more. And I think that's just amazing. It makes her very, very good. Offers great support. S tier refined in my opinion. Not top tier meta breaking, but going to make her a very good niche powerful unit. In A tier, I'm actually going to have Brave Krom at second. It's kind of crazy for him to be in second place because the refine itself doesn't really have that many effects. But they're all the key effects he really, really wants, except for Anti-Guard. Like, he has pretty much everything else. And so, I think with this refine, like, it's just, it's really solid. It's just like with Brave Elgard. It's a solid refine that gives her exactly what she needs. Uh, we're going to have Keegan in third place. I think Keegan's refine is actually just kind of cracked, it, especially for an F2P unit. He just got, like, everything in the kitchen sink in there. And he's going to be a really solid tank, in my opinion. Definitely not meta defining, but really solid. In, third, uh, in fourth place, we're going to have Legendary Female Bioth once again. Solid nuke, solid support. Got some key effects you really needed as well, so nice. Down in B tier, we're gonna have Seleth, other Byleth, and Tiki. Now, I think these refines are overall good. They're definitely not bad refines, but they're just not at the level necessary for these units to really make any type of impact in the game, in my opinion. I think if self does like come back into the meta in any way, it's mostly because of the base effects he already had. The refine itself just makes him a little bit better, but it really doesn't fix any of his key weaknesses, in my opinion. And so I think in a lot of situations, we'll still be seeing like either like max excel legendary self, which is stacking that, or just going back to AoE self yet again, but he's just a little bit better now. And then with Brave Bioth and Tiki, same thing. They just don't have the key effects they really need. I don't think these refines are all that great. They definitely make the units better, but they're just not standouts. And it's really unfortunate to see Brave Tiki at the end of this list. I just think she got the worst refine overall. I think they put way too much of the refine budget into Distant Counter. I think they should have took that and broken it down into like two big effects or like even like three smaller effects that could have really helped her out. And let her stay with like a Distant Counter A skill or even the seal slot. I think it would have been better for her. So it's really unfortunate. I'm really sorry, Tiki fans, but you just keep taking those L's. I don't know why they hate adult Tiki, but it is what it is. With that said, I'd love to hear from you. Which refine is your favorite? Who do you plan to refine? What kind of builds are you planning to run on these units? Do you think I got something wrong? I'm sure there will be at least one Tiki fan screaming at me in the comment section. I am waiting for it. Either way, make sure to drop a comment down below. As always, I'd like to thank all my members for their constant support. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. This has been Oblivion. I'll catch y'all later with more Fire Heroes.